free do you feel? When I ask that question these days, most people say they feel much less free than they did when they were growing up, than they did 10 years ago or even a couple of years ago. There is a lot of talk about freedom and civil liberties these days. Some say the pandemic response over the last two years has limited our civil liberties unduly and unconstitutionally. Others say that all restrictions, including masking mandates and gathering limits, are justified to keep people safe. How do we resolve these kinds of disputes? What are civil liberties? Where do they come from? And why do they matter in the 21st century? Civil liberties are basically the rights and freedoms that citizens enjoy in a democracy, those that protect us from government. In Canada, these appear in our Charter as fundamental freedoms and include freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought and expression, freedom of peaceful assembly, and freedom of association. These rights are important, but they are secondary because you need the core freedoms to exercise them. What good is the right to vote, for example, if you lack freedom of thought and expression? So civil liberties are literally the freedoms of people or the ways free people should be treated as opposed to the way we would treat a slave, an animal, or a robot. The concept of civil liberties found in most Western democracies is rooted in the writings of classical liberals like the 17th century British philosopher John Locke. Locke was a bit of a rebel. The prevailing political idea in England when he was writing was that God made people to be naturally subject to a monarch. Locke instead said that humans are by nature free and equal, that we are born with certain inalienable rights, such as the rights to life, liberty, and property. For Locke, government has not always existed. Humans were originally born into a state of nature. In this state, we were perfectly free, but life was also, as the philosopher Thomas Hobbes wrote, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. So, in order to ensure ourselves a more stable life, we were willing to form a social contract with each other, in which we give up some of our absolute rights in exchange for a degree of security and protection. In other words, Governments exist only by our consent in order to protect the rights we naturally have. And governments that fail to respect these rights can and should be resisted and replaced. Okay, so Locke had this idea over 300 years ago that governments should respect human freedoms as much as possible. But why should we care now? Why should this matter now? Well, since civil liberties are needed in order to live as freely as possible, the question becomes, why is it important for humans to be free? That's maybe an odd question, because the reason it's important to be free is because we are free, because it's our nature to be free. And to pretend that we are not, or to treat others as though they are not, as though they are slaves or subjects or unable to make decisions for themselves, is to deny people their humanity. We have reason and we have free will, the power of self-determination and the freedom to do otherwise. And by that I just mean that when we drive up to an intersection, it is up to us whether we turn left or right whether or not we eat the second piece of cake we know we shouldn't have. To treat a person as free is to respect her rationality, that thing that allows us to make choices that reflect who we are and what we want to be. There are limits, of course. It's been said that one person's freedom stops where another's begins. And so we stop at traffic lights and refrain from entering people's homes without their permission. But to lose personal freedom altogether is to lose what makes us who we are. Also, research shows a strong link between freedom and happiness. 
Among the richest countries in the world, those with the greatest sense of psychological freedom have the highest reported levels of happiness, moral virtues like courage and compassion, and overall well-being. The Finns are happier than the French, arguably, because they dare more to be free. So freedom isn't just a relic of the past or a political nice to have. It makes possible not only happiness and well-being, but a life that is most fitting for a human being. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider making a tax-deductible donation to the democracyfund.ca slash donate.